Yo, what's up? This is your boy Postman and you're tuned in to Post in a Diary Room. Welcome to Post in a Diary Room. And as you may know, every day is a good day to get a delivery from the Postman. And of course, if this is your very first time tuning in, please kindly like, share, subscribe, comment, do whatever is necessary to engage with the content. And most importantly, enjoy today's review because today I am actually reviewing the man who makes Timbisa visible on Google Maps every time he raps and of course i am talking about touchline he's back again with a brand new project it is of course titled before i say more Two. the first version of before i say more actually dropped around 2022 and this was around the time where he dropped soon too this is a project that probably holds as a scooby snack for his fans to just munch on while he cooks his album and i must mention that touchline is actually one of the most consistent rappers that we have in the game right now and this project has a lot of standout features in Mugs, Kid X, Ginger Trill, Kane Key, and this is a nine track EP that begins with the song 2086. A song where Touchline speaks of himself in his futuristic state where he's living a very lavish life just off the music that he makes. This is a multi layered, scathing rap song. I love the beat, it brings out the necessary stank face. I also like how the switching off of the drums was met with a flow switch by Touchline. And pretty much I must say that 2086 had me a lot more enthused coming into this project. Similarly, Time to Kill is more or less on the same wavelength, if you think about it, because it's also another scathing rap song. And it contains a beat from the far left. And I actually like how Ginger Chill actually shines through the loops. I would actually argue that this is more of a rap relay slash conversation between the three guys. Because of how even Kitty X even comes on. He begins his verse with the word yep. Which seemingly means that he agrees with all that has been said during the course of the song. And now he just takes the time to share his own perspective on how he sees things. To be frank, this is more of your lyrical miracle type joint. I like the beat. I like this song, I'm not gonna lie. And for Touchline, I think this is a bag that he might need to exploit for a lot longer and just see what comes out of it because I do feel like there's a lot of potential in as far as his rapping style is concerned and these types of beats also kind of match his rapping style. They suited best. Libra Fields is amongst the many other love heartbreak songs that we do have on this project. Need I mention that Touchline channels a very calm tone which is significant throughout the three joints i think the point behind him channeling such a tone is because he's trying to suck in the necessary audience or the target audience that this song needs to cater for so that he throws them right into the message that he's trying to bring across but to me the songs do sound a lot alike just that they do have a different content measure the notable misses on this project for me have to be the song Zimaliyami as well as Touch Wabandwan. Especially Zimaliyami because Touchline normally, you know, slides in unnecessarily so such a song on all his project because he does have a track record of doing these cross-genre songs which normally don't even work, which don't work for him. The beat is horrible. Touchline's contribution is also subpar. Essentially what I'm trying to say here is the cross-genre joints that Touchline normally does are very horrible and they're quite noticeable because in almost every project that he has, such a song has to come up. I will say this though, it was quite refreshing to hear Muggs on a beat, even though I did feel like Muggs also outperformed Touchline on the joint Touch Wabantuana. The setting that is kind of illustrated in the song is more of a setting of the niggas being in a house party and people are on the couch and Muggs just comes on to say that boy nah, you know they're just having a great time and they walked in they walked in by walking or they came in either, or they got in or they walked in by walking or they got in by walking and then they left by crawling yeah you see like with these things they normally make sense when you say them in the language that they're said in. But now that I'm translating it, it's like because they're not even making sense. For me, in my opinion, on some songs, I can take the aspect of having some sexual bars on a joint because you're trying to maybe, you know, remind the person that you're writing the song to that, you know, yeah, me, I used to have your leg by my, my, by my shoulders and I was just digging you in and all those things. But I don't understand how the sexual raps kind of make way into the song Kane's Arrival. I thought the song was just about Kane Keed and and then eventually he mentioned the sex talk and then was like, okay, but what is this all about? But credit to Kane Keed, I thought he had a wonderful verse on this joint and he stepped up. And it is a wonderful co-sign because now what the song is going to do is it's going to expose him a lot more to the people 
that love Touchline and listen to Touchline a lot more. And in a sense, it's beneficial to Kane Kid. The kick in 808 were quite important in as far as the production element is concerned because it's quite important because these guys were trying to bring across this Ice Spice type beat which actually came out very, very well, in my opinion. This was a, a dope beat. I thought that Touchline was spazzing out here. And he he had the right level of aura to even title the song Aura. I think merely he's just showcasing his lyrical prowess because it's not every day where you hear Touchline rap on such a beat. And he's just showing to us, yeah, me, I can eat up any type of beat. I will say this, though. This is my plea to South Africa. I just want South Africa to... I'm not even going to say they're sleeping on Mandy's 8A, but I'm just going to ask South Africans to just pay a lot more attention to Mandy's 8A because I believe she's a wonderful vocalist. She's just too good. She's one of the key contributors in South African R&B. And shout out to Touchline for consistently giving her the necessary platform for her to showcase her talent. Overall, this project by Touchline is just okay. It's more of an experiment. It's just having fun because it also dropped on his birthday week so he's just yeah celebrating his birthday and this is one project where he's just having fun on this and it's nothing too serious nothing too complex and in my opinion this project gets a six out of ten touchlines new project before i say more two gets a six out of ten post in the diary and please kindly like share subscribe comment do whatever is necessary to engage with the content and most importantly i will see you on the next one